What up guys, the Comics Kid 2099 and I've got a graphic novel that I want to talk to you about. Just finished reading this this morning. Doomsday Point One, written and drawn and I believe inked by John Byrne. Uh, I, like I said, I read this this morning. I actually didn't think I was going to get it all done this morning. I thought I would read one or two issues this morning. Uh, didn't stop reading it. I just read the whole thing before I went to work. And uh, this is a pretty good book. I didn't really know what I was expecting here. John Byrne is a guy who, no matter what he does, for the most part, I will seek out his stuff and see if it's any good. It's not always something that I like. It's not always good. But he is a name who just about, no matter what he does, I will follow him to see if what he does is something that I enjoy. And I really wasn't sure if I would enjoy this because one of the latest things that he did was a series called Cold War, also at IDW. This series is done at IDW, as you can see right there. Uh, Cold War, which was basically James Bond with very, very little gadgets set in the 1950s. And I didn't really like Cold War. Maybe someday I'll review it because I don't think I've reviewed it on this channel before. Didn't really like Cold War, so I wasn't really sure what to expect from Doomsday Point One. And I actually really liked it. And if you're curious what the premise is, basically, this is uh, following the crew of a space station who they're in a, in a space station and this giant solar flare that's like four times the size of planet Earth, it goes through and basically just devastates planet Earth. It destroys most of the life on the planet. There are a few small parts of the world that are not affected or not affected as bad. And I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm no scientist, but I feel like the science presented in this book doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. For example, if you go to a certain part of the world, this giant solar flare that's four times the size of the planet is somehow not going to affect you there. But if you go a little further north, it will affect you. I'm going to go ahead and say that that's bogus and that probably wouldn't happen if in real life, if there was a giant solar flare, I'm going to go ahead and say that everyone on the planet would die. But of course, this has to fudge the science a little bit in order for there to be a story. So anyway, this group of uh, people who are up in the space station, they come on down to Earth and then it's basically them trying to survive and they run into various obstacles. And it's called Doomsday Point One because at the end of the first issue, the dawn is coming, the sun is rising, and they say it's the first day after Doomsday, or Doomsday Point One. One thing that I really like about this, uh, and this book, if after you've heard the plot, it's basically a disaster movie in comic book form. It's kind of like The Day After Tomorrow, or 2012. One of those movies that's basically just a huge, world-shattering disaster movie. And I really don't care about those movies, which is interesting because this book is very similar to those kinds of movies but I really like the book and I really don't care about those movies and I think one of the things that really separates this book from those kinds of movies is that we get to follow these survivors over the span of almost a year. Uh, the first issue is set during the end of the world and then the day after the end of the world and then the next issue is set like 60 days later and then the next issue after that is set another 60 or so days later and the last issue is something like over 200 uh, days later. It's uh, long enough that one of the crew members who was on the space station, she's given birth to a baby. So it's at least nine months later. And I really find it interesting that in most disaster movies like this, you would just be focusing on the disaster itself. You really wouldn't be focusing on the characters trying to forge ahead and continue their lives after the disaster is done. And that's what we get to see in this book. And so by the end, we've spent almost a year with them, even though it's only four issues. And that was probably the saving grace of this book. If it had done what 2012 had done, and it's just focusing on this crew during the end of the world, but we don't get to see what they're doing after the end of the world, I probably wouldn't have liked it as much. I will say, if you compare this to other apocalypse series like Why the Last Man or The Walking Dead, those series, they have a lot more fodder to make stories out of. With The Walking Dead, it's not like the entire planet was destroyed and you're following a small group of people fighting zombies. You've got everyone on planet Earth and then whoever dies becomes a zombie. But you've got a lot more potential to create new stories out of that scenario. And then with Why the Last Man, you've got one dude and then the rest of the planet is females. And so there you've got many different possibilities for different stories that you could tell. In this book, there's really not that many possibilities. It really leads you to believe that most of the planet has been destroyed. Uh, not destroyed, but most of the life on the planet has been wiped out. And so the, so the situations that we have, other than like, like I said, uh, there's this one prison in Texas, which is apparently one of the safe zones. Other than there being safe zones in a disaster like this, 
for the most part, I find it believable that some of these people survived who were on the planet when it happened. For example, there's a crew to a submarine, and they just submerged to the very bottom of the ocean, and they managed to stay safe by doing that. And so, I find that to be pretty believable, uh, and the only reason I bring this up, that this series doesn't have as many possibilities for creating new stories in this end-of-the-world scenario, the only reason I bring that up is because the very end of this story kind of hints that there's going to be a sequel, and I don't know if there actually is. I know that Cold War, uh, there was a sequel to that miniseries, which I did not read, uh, so I'm assuming maybe John Byrne is going to do a sequel to Doomsday Point 1, uh, because it looks like a lot of what Byrne has been doing lately with his career has all been at IDW. Uh, he did a superhero series called Trio, which is advertised in the back of this book, and I, I have not read, and then he did this, and then he did uh, Cold War. And so, I'm assuming that he is going to do a sequel because it sets up a sequel or at least the possibility of a sequel at the end of this book. And that could potentially be problematic because this book does not make it seem like there are that many human beings on the planet and so the sources for conflict for these characters to run into in the sequel is greatly diminished. And so that is how it differs from books like The Walking Dead or Why the Last Man where those are ongoing series that last a very long time. This, I can see it lasting one or two minis, but not much more beyond that. I really can't, I, I could not see this being an ongoing series the way it's presented here. Uh, I like this book. I don't have a whole heck of a lot more to say. The art is good. I like John Byrne's artwork. I've always liked his artwork. It's his stories that I'm uh, hit or miss on. Sometimes I really like his stories, sometimes I really don't. His artwork is solid. I really love his art. Uh, the characters, they are uh, for the most part, somewhat well-rounded out. Uh, some of them are much more developed than others, and I feel like that's going to be less of a problem if there is a sequel. Uh, of course, you've got like six or seven people who are on the space station at the beginning of this miniseries, and then by the end, you've uh, diminished that crew a little bit. So, if we do get a sequel, I think that we will get more character development for those characters in the sequel. We didn't get that much here because there were too many characters and it's kind of trying to juggle them all. It kills a few of them. Spoiler. I won't tell you who is killed. Uh, but for the most part, I do think the character development is handled about as well as it could be in this book. Uh, if there is a sequel, I think it will be handled much better. Uh, so that uh, that is my thoughts on Doomsday Point 1. I hope that you guys like this video. I hope that I was able to convince you to pick this book up. I think it's worth picking up. I hope that you guys like this book. And if you did like this video, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will be back later in the week with a different kind of video. See you then.